Welcome back to the lead. On this date, December 7th, this, this date has indeed lived in infamy. Ever since President Franklin Roosevelt said those immortal words, Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor 75 years ago today, it claimed 2,403 lives and changed the course of world history. This morning in Hawaii, some of the veterans who lived through that attack were on hand to pay their respects and recall their experiences. One of those survivors joins us now from Oahu, retired Navy Lieutenant Jim Downing, age 103. He served on the USS West Virginia. He lost 106 of his shipmates that day. Lieutenant Downing, first off, thank you for your service and thank you for being with us today. Take us back to that morning, 7.55 a.m. The bomb started dropping. Where were you? What happened? Actually, I was uh, off the ship for the first 20 minutes. I'd been married for five months, and uh, my new bride and I lived about 20 minutes from the uh, air station here. What scene plays most vividly in your, in your mind when you think about today, 75 years ago, December 7th, 1941? Well, as I look back, the uh, strongest thing was surprise. There were no satellites in those days. Radar was not yet accepted. So the first shock was surprise. The first Japanese plane I saw was flying toward me low and slow. And the pilot bank, the machine gunner cut loose and the bullets went over my head and dug a trench behind me. So surprise had turned into fear. And then my fear turned into anger. Anger that the world had let Japan build up a big war machine. And also angry at our own political and military leaders for getting, letting us get caught like that. So those were the reactions they were triggered by the fact that I looked just a few hundred yards from here at my battleship. It had been my home for 10 years. It took nine torpedoes and uh, began to take on water and to sink and was on fire above the water line. So I was really grieved to see my home of 10 years sinking and on fire. And you had a lot of friends who were badly injured. I'm told you took a notebook and you offered to do something for them and their families. It's pretty remarkable. Tell us about that. Yes, well, we were moored next to another battleship, the Tennessee, which was almost undamaged. So I knew the flames were approaching ammunition storage. So I took a hose and uh, tried to keep the fire away from this ammunition. But while I was doing that, I noticed the bodies lying around and it occurred to me that their parents would never know what happened. We had the fireproof name tags and lanterns so the flame couldn't touch it. So I began memorizing a few of these names with the objective of uh, writing to their parents and tell them about their heroic last minutes in this life. There are not a lot of people left who can share memories like the ones you're sharing with us today. What's it like being back in Hawaii with your fellow veterans on this anniversary? Well, I think the uh, picture in our minds is really not the uh, uh, greatness of this island. Our, it's frozen in our minds, the destruction that took place that morning. So it's good to meet uh, old friends and talk to them, but um, Somehow that image of the attack is frozen in our minds, and that kind of overrules everything else. Lieutenant, I cannot thank you enough for your service and your sacrifice to you and all your fellow members of the greatest generation. Thank you for what you did, and thank you for, for spending some time with us today. Well, I thank you for the privilege of talking with you.